All right, we've been teasing this for a while. So for those of you who had the Ram 3500 Cummins Diesel Mega Cab single rear wheel drive on your bingo card, you won. That is the new vehicle that we've got here for the Dena Tools. Now it's a 2014 bodies. Most of it's in great shape. Parts of it, not so much. There's going to be a little bit of work there, clearly on the uh, the, the front bumper there, uh, but nothing. A little bit of you know elbow grease there won't fix. Anyway. Yeah, this is a huge step up from the last truck. Uh, the dash here, even the dash is an upgrade, which is weird considering this is a 2014, we had a 2016 before. It's allegedly the same trim package, they're both big horns, but the clearly here on the 3500, uh, maybe the options package, that's the only thing I can assume is the options package, or maybe it's because it is the 3500. We got a lot of info screens here built into it. Uh, the Now this is clearly an upgrade, this whole infotainment kind of thing here. Oddly, it does not have GPS considering it's got this kind of screen in it. But you know what, you got GPS on your phone, so who really needs it? I don't like dealing with the in-dash GPSs anyway. It's got everything else that I would want and or need and probably more. We got two-wheel drive, four-wheel lock, four-wheel low, of course. You have your basic controls here for uh, climate control. You got to use the top screen for all the fine controls. We got the towing controls here, traction control, tow haul, heated seats. We've got the exhaust brake, all the fun stuff. We got uh, a 12 volt input here, and then we've got a dedicated USB 12 volt uh, right there. We get the 150, the power. I love this option that the Rams have, has it right in the dash. That thing is great. I love the controls on this, again, probably biased because I did have that uh, 2016, the controls on the back for the audio, volume, and station. We got the controls. This is the best upgrade is they have an actual gear shift, not that stupid little hockey puck. But everything else, if coming from a, a previous Ram owner, it's all in the same spots. Everything, the electric sliding window there. Uh, you know, my, <laughs> check, make sure my, my beard looks good. Uh, this was a weird upgrade, an Alpine stereo system. I was not expecting that, and I think you'll be surprised also. Uh, yeah, nothing to see there. Love that center console, though. I'm a big fan of the setup here. I, I, I like the Ram. I, I do. I, I like the way it's laid out. It makes a lot of sense. I like this little tray. That's different than the one that I had. Uh, the, the door here. Now, this is weird. They have cup holders down there. I guess maybe you could put a water bottle or something down there. I don't know what else you would put in down there. Uh, it's got electric controls for the driver's side. Everyone else has to deal with the regular stuff. We got the WeatherTech mats in there, front and back, actually, which is really nice. Now, of course, I'm excited, the 3500 heavy-duty diesel. The kids, of course, are most excited about the fact it's a turbo. Now, this is the vehicle we had before. Now, it is a quad, or it was a quad cab. I guess it still is. And it was great for our family at the time, but our family is getting bigger. And no, I don't mean we're having more kids. That little one in the picture there is not ours. But the ones we have, they are literally getting bigger. Duncan is, he just hit six foot. And fitting him in the back of that truck just was no longer going to be an option. So if we said we're going to go big, let's go all the way big. And that's why we got the Mega Cab. <laughs> Come on, you got to say it like that when you say it. Anyway, this is the back seat. It's good enough for a full-size person my size. I can sit back there comfortably. You can recline the back seats because there is that extra mega cab kind of space. You pull this little lever here, though, and your seat folds forward. It goes completely flat if you want it to. There's a little bit of storage back there. Uh, little, There's some little cubbies as well as a nice, long, narrow storage area here. I'm not what, sure what kind of very long, narrow kind of thing I could put back there. I'm sure some of you might have a suggestion. But here's the really cool part, though, why a lot of people like this. Both seats folded down. You have a ton of space. If you're hauling more cargo stuff you want to carry inside. I know guys who drive these trucks as hot shotters who sleep back there in them. Again, as I said, it's the big horn, it's the Ram, and yes, this is a 4x4, if you can't tell by the height. It does have a spray-in bed liner. It does need to be touched up in a few places, but it's in pretty good shape overall. Uh, the only rust I was able to find on the vehicle is up on that front bumper. Now here, we're gonna show you the engine here. Something, this is gonna give you some clues here. If you look at this, why is there all this writing? Well, the previous owner for this was the Yellowstone. No. <laughs> Not that Yellowstone, the Yellowstone Country Club, uh, in, or say the Yellowstone Club, a bunch of hoity-toity, it's a privately owned, members-only ski resort up near Big Sky, and this was a service vehicle, so needless to say, we've got 
loads of documentation as to the service history and uh, fixes and upgrades that this truck has gone through. So it's been a weird sort of upgrade to this truck. Uh, as a lot of you know, previously I had a 2016 Ram 1500 Hemi. Uh, it was the quad cab, which was great for our family at the time, but our family got bigger, our needs got bigger, so <laughs> changes had to happen. Um, it is a huge step up and in a weird way a step back because we're going to a 2014. It's got 187,000 miles on it, which seems absolutely ridiculous to buy something like this. But you got to understand what you get when you're stepping into the diesel package. The 6.9 uh, Cummins diesel here, not quite as reliable, I would say, as the, the previous version. You're, you're taking essentially the same platform and making it put out more power. Yes, it can tow more. Yes, it's got better performance. I mean, there's no point with this truck, you're sitting there going, well, I wish it would accelerate just a little bit faster. I mean, maybe some young kids would, but for, you know, the average grown man who has, you know, family and stuff, I'm not looking for a hot rod. I'll be honest, the Hemi felt like a hot rod. It felt like I was driving a muscle car, um, but this feels like you're driving a significant truck. Uh, I'll be honest, this is, this is fairly lifted. I did have a vehicle previously that was a, almost, or it, I think it was actually a little bit, maybe an inch or two taller than this. And that was a lifted GMC uh, Suburban XL or the Yukon XL, which is the length of a Suburban. And of course that was an aftermarket lift. It was a four by four, you know, off-road design lift, much cushier drive. We just drove this off-road and this is not a fun truck to drive off-road. You feel every single bump, which is very similar to the, the ride I felt in the 1500. Now uh, we have a Suburban. That one's actually decent off-road on these, these back country uh, roads. You know, you get a lot of water rush, you uh, run out, you get a lot of the ripple effect going down that washboard effect on the road. Uh, the one that was honestly the best was the Jeep Renegade. It would go across those things like they weren't there. The thing, as I said, it was our, uh, our mountain goat. But, you know, the ride here, the vehicle is so heavy. It doesn't matter how far you go into a turn. You still feel solid. You still feel like you're on top of things. You always feel like there's, you put your foot down and there's always more, <laughs> more torque, more, more gas to give. Uh, you never feel like there's going to be a point where you're not going to have enough power to do what you need. Now we haven't towed with it and that was the main reason for buying this was we are looking to get a, a fifth wheel to tow back and forth from Montana down to Nevada. <laughs> the local train there we got the Northern Pacific line here running through uh, through Livingston. But I mean that's the thing is we're trying to get away from owning or renting down in, in Nevada. Uh, because we're really only going to be invested down there as long as my son is living down there, which is just basically through high school. He's planning on going to college in the Marines uh, after that. So, or not Marines, I think he goes back and forth. Marines, Army, we'll see where he goes. Marines, right? Um, anyway, let me make sure I'm getting down to the 25 mile an hour here. Got to watch it around here. This, that's one of the things, it's easy. It's weird because sometimes it makes you feel like you're going way faster than you are. But at slower speeds, it's really easy to just cruise at 40 miles an hour. Um, as far as comfort and everything else, I feel very much like I'm back at home. I feel like it's the 1500 because it's the it's the Ram layout. It's the same generation Ram. It's the big horn, so the same trim kind of package. The seats are the same. The center console is the same. The wheel is the same. Uh, most of it's the same. Now this does have some upgrades that mine didn't. It has the, the more advanced uh, console there, the mo more advanced uh, uh, dash up here. It's got uh, some features mine didn't. Heated seats, heating steering wheel. That's, I mean, I, I want to say it's ridiculous, but on a cold winter night, you know, I drove the, the wife's Renegade and that had the heated seats and heated, heated steering wheel. And it's a nice luxury to have. Um, but what's it like driving it? It's it's different. It's like driving a big truck. You're way up there. The mega cab here is about as big. The front half of the truck's about as big as the back half of the truck. Um, it doesn't doesn't feel like it's significantly longer 
than the last truck but it is longer and that's because you know the other one was a quad cab so this is the full size crew cab plus the extension on that which is what makes it the mega cab as you saw in the video plus we have the standard six and was it three quarters bed behind it uh it am i regretting the purchase not in the least but this thing it drives like a new truck it feels like a new truck it feels it feels actually it, i take that back it feels like a truck that's nicely broken in like it's been you know on the road for a couple years and it's doing what it's supposed to do and it's just hitting its stride which is odd considering that it's got 187,000 miles the interior if you've seen the dash and everything it looks practically new in fact i'd say there's less wear and tear in this vehicle at 187,000 miles than i saw in my ram 2016 the 1500 at just under 100,000 miles if you didn't see what happened with that we ended up selling that to carfax for a profit you know we sold the the, the renegade there we made a profit on that one we sold it for more than we paid for it oh the this market is crazy but it, but you know what goes around comes around because we ended up buying this vehicle and we certainly did pay more than i wanted to pay but in this market especially up here in montana trying to find one of these large diesel trucks they're premium up here especially trying to find one in the mega cab with the four by four that is asking a lot and honestly we bought it the day the dealership got it in it took us weeks to actually get our hands on it because they hadn't finished their prep procedure and going over it and everything else uh and thankfully they did they fixed the serpentine belt they uh serviced the the front and rear diff they did a bunch of work to it to, to make it road worthy and uh, i want to say thank you to them the great people to work with over there uh, at wrestler chevrolet anyway you know, I'm taking you through a quick cruise here through Livingston. I've done a lot of the drive-throughs on Livingston. It's great around town, but now, but a diesel, of course, isn't perfect for around town kind of use. Uh, you really want to, when you drive them, you want to get them warmed up. You want to use them. So I've been driving this for about half the day at this point, and you know that's what we're going to do. We're going to have other vehicles from around town. We've got the wife's suburban. It's now her vehicle. That's going to be her daily driver for around town, and you know medium-sized trips around the state and then I'm probably gonna get a, uh, a small cheap 4x4 vehicle for just puttering around town you know uh, I was looking at a, um, a, a Jeep or like a, an old Bronco 2 or something of that size like something small uh, easy to park in the shop if you've seen the tour the shop tour there is a little bit of space to park a vehicle in there that would make it easier on me for trying to park stuff there we're going by mark's burgers anybody who's been to livingston of course knows all about mark's uh, of course that place is always packed during the summer you know during the week uh and on the weekends anyway uh as far as the truck uh you know it's not perfect it, it definitely we weren't looking for something that was completely polished it's got some rock chips up front there's some of the black trim on the side that's peeling off there's a small tear of the driver's seat and, and as far as i think the biggest thing are the rust spots we saw on the the front bumper so i'm going to be taking that off uh gr sanding grinding that down to bare metal uh and then probably uh, welding in some filler uh, grinding that back down repainting it I think I'm gonna go with something like a, uh, a dura coat or kind of something you know, like a rhino liner kind of thing to give it a little bit more robustness We're, I'm doing some research as to what's gonna be a, the best thing there anyway if you got any comments or questions put them down uh, in the comments down below I try to read all of them and I know there's a lot of people questioning they're looking at getting a truck do I do gas do I do diesel do I go with a half ton? Do I do a light duty? Do I get a one ton or I split the difference and go for the three quarter ton? It, it's a lot of people like to ask me stuff like, what's the best, uh, you know, blank that I can buy? And the thing is, and the truth is, asking what's the best is a question we hate to hear because it, it's so impossible to answer. What we need here is what's the best for this use? What's the best for if I'm going to be doing this? What's the best if I want to be doing you know that or the other thing? Because it's just a tool and the tool comes down to the best tool for the best for the right situation and that's what you got to look at. For us this is a family mover, cross-country driver, and towing vehicle and that's why we went with this. As to why the mega cab? Well 
when your oldest son is already six foot at 15 years of age and you gotta fit five kids in a Labradog, the Mega Cab kind of seems to be the choice to go with. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. You all take care, God bless, and as always, shine on.